A vehicle is designed to get you from one place to another. Is that all right? That's all right. Uh, it, it's, it's no good just uh, just sitting there shiny, looking good and pretty, uh, and, and the tires are all down. Yeah. It's no good unless there's a motor in there, 350 or something. Okay. Uh, you can put your foot to the pedal and, and, and there you go. <laughs> That's all it's designed for. That's it. Really to get you from one point to another. Amen. And the church of Christ, the church, the people, Designed to get us from earth to heaven. Amen. That's why I know you want to go right. to heaven. All right. But the only way to get to heaven is through or in the vehicle that God Himself designed. Design. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. He's the builder. You, you look on the side of the old uh, 83 Birks right there uh, at the door at, uh, as you get in down there on the floorboard. You look down there, you open the door, and there's a seal which says, I don't know if you all remember this, by. there's a seal that says, Fisher Built. And I often wonder, why, why did they put that seal there? Well, the seal is those who, 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 who looked it over and checked it out and tested it and, and carried it through whatever it needed to go through to make sure that it was safe for you and I to drive it. The seal was there to say that, that it has a stamp of approval. You're not saying amen. Amen. The church of Christ has God's stamp of approval. No doubt. Yes, that, that's why the church is all right. Yes, sir. That's why that's why there's no better place to be than in the church. Because it has been given God's stamp of approval. Amen. Let me talk to you for just a few minutes. And so that I can spark an interest here, an interest here to come back each and every evening. The meeting actually uh, starts Monday through Wednesday. This is just to get you started. Okay. All right, Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. You, you, know, you, ever, you ever serve the dessert before the meal? <laughs> you know, you ever, you ever serve the meal before the appetizer this is just an appetizer so so they don't give you too much the, the appetizer is not designed to fill you up all right it's just to get you ready oh, yeah. <laughs> amen for, for, the, for the meal amen, amen. You, all, you all need to wake up <laughs> this morning. God is so good. Amen. See, uh, many uh, that have come and my family members got in trouble last time uh, with, with, with the dial side of my family uh, because, I, because I called out uh, my family. I called them my real family. You know, sometimes you say things you don't mean yeah. and it's charge it to my head yeah. and not my heart. Amen. And so I've learned my lesson. I, uh, my, my family, my family is here though. You better not mess with me. Uh -oh. Man, if, if, if nobody else got my back, they got my back. All right. Anybody here ever been in a fight? Yeah. You're too afraid, too afraid to admit it. You ever, ever been, in all your life, you ever been in a fight? Yes. And if, you know you don't ever want to get in a fight. And your brothers and sisters won't have nowhere around. Uh, yeah. Amen. That, that, I mean, that's when you that's when you boast when, when somebody's around you. Call. <laughs> what you gonna do? You look back to make sure they're still there. You look back and make sure they're still around before you start boasting. What you gonna do? Call. 
and, 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 and nothing really happened because you had your family there. Mm -hmm. Who had your back. Amen. We're in the battle for our souls. And as a family of God, we are to have one another's back against the forces of Satan. Amen. Matthew chapter 16. What is the church of Christ? This, of course, through the years has been the battle of so many Christians. In a world that is that has outnumbered the church when it comes to religion. The church of Christ is not just a religion. Amen, somebody. Amen. Talk to him. The church of Christ ha has never been a denomination. The Church of Christ is not a part of. The Church of Christ is the whole. Amen, somebody. That just simply means uh, denominationalism uh, has to do with denominations uh, that came out of a particular a particular bill. Let's say that it's uh, a one dollar bill. Well, of course, you would have four quarters, would you not? And each of the quarters is just a part of the whole. They are, they are not the whole, but they make up the whole. Amen, somebody. The church of Christ is this. Matthew chapter 16. And I want to begin, I want to begin here at verse number 16. Matthew chapter 16. And I want to begin at verse number 16. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, Amen. the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed, he pronounced the blessing. Blessed art thou, Simon Bajon, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I, pay attention, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen. Is that in your Bible? It's in there, preacher. Is that in your Bible this morning? Jesus, pay, pay attention not to what in the previous verses or verses above, not to what some are saying. But well, let's pay attention to what Jesus said. had to say. Because there, 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 there are two sides to every story. Talk to them. Before they were saying this, one thing or the other, about who Jesus really is. Because they really did not know. Sometimes people are talking about Jesus, but they really don't know who he is. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Just because you can call his name Jesus is real loud and real, real fast. high <laughs> does not mean that you have, have a, the proper relationship Talk to him. with Jesus. Yeah. I just said something. It's important to have the proper relationship with Jesus. Listen, listen if you will to what's, what's in this text. Upon 
this rock. I will build my church. Let's go to school for just a minute. I, I, I never really liked school. All right, brother. Amen, somebody. Amen. It, it, it was just simply a necessity uh, to get what was necessary uh, to get through. Uh, because if you didn't, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. When you get back home, Lord have mercy. you were not to go to someone else's house and spend the rest of the day until school was over. They call that skipping. <laughs> yeah. But school has its value. Let's go to school for just, just a second. All right. I will build my church. Underline some, some things here. Underscore some things here. I will build. I thought he was, I thought he was telling me I was out of time or something. I, I will build my church. My is a personal possessive pronoun. Is that all right? That's all right. My is a personal possessive pronoun. It, it describes to whom, to whom the house belongs. Right. Is that all right? right. It, it, it describes, you see, you see, it describes who is holding the deed right. to the house. All right, all right. It's describing who has done what is necessary to be considered the owner of the house. Right. You see, when you don't own the house and you don't carry the deed to the house, you don't have the right to do what you want to do in the house. Amen. Some people, some people, I've got to say this, some people, Paul says, need to learn, even in the church, how to behave themselves how come? in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, Amen. the pillar and the ground of the truth. Amen. Amen. Somebody, because I'm learning the house belongs to somebody. Amen. In every house, every house, the Bible is right. It said, the Bible says, every house is built by some man. By some man. Oh, I want you to get this with me. Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 3 through 7. Every house is built by some man. It, it, it reminds me of what the psalmist said in the long ago in Psalms 127. Hold it right there. In Psalms 127, except the Lord build the house. Amen. They labor in vain that build, that build it. Listen. Have you ever thought, have you ever thought religiously you, you and I may be doing something that we ought not be doing in somebody else's house. That, you know, our, our parents didn't play that years ago. If you would go to someone else's house, you better get somewhere and be still. Usually they would tell you in the first place, go on outside somewhere. Amen. You remember that? How does it how does it is? I, I don't think it's any harder, any harder today than it was back then. And they will put you out in many, many five degree weather. You find something to do. <laughs> but you're not gonna come in here tearing up the house. Oh, that's, that, that, you know, that has some that has some validity even when it comes to the church. Yo, you're tearing it up in so many ways. You got he now they gave the time to get Hebrews chapter three. Hebrews chapter three, verse three through seven. Who's reading that? Who's reading that? Somebody read that for us. 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who. Somebody read that for us. You, you, you need the mic? Um, for every house is built by some man. I want us to listen to this. For every house, every house is built by some man. But he that built all things. But I like, I like, I like Put these the transitions in scripture. But he that built it all things. He that built all things is who? It's God. Every house is built by some man. But he that built it all things. Now, what it simply means, he who's ruling over whatever it is, is God. Come on. And Moses uh, verily was faithful. He said, now, I just want to show you something in teaching. Moses was very faithful in his house. And all his house. Yeah, that is, Moses did the best he could with what he had. Right. Amen, somebody. Right. Moses was very faithful in all his house. As a servant. As a what? As a servant. Moses was a what? As a servant. Moses was not the head. All right, Moses all right. Moses was a what? As a servant. Moses was a servant. In the I, house. Want, I want to press that because if we don't get that, we won't understand the church of Christ. All right. Because I want us to understand the church of Christ. I want us to understand to whom the church belongs. Moses was very faithful in the as house. a servant. In the house. Come on. For a testimony of those For a testimony of those things. Which were to be spoken after. Which were to be spoken after. Now he says, here it is. You see, the testimony of what Moses did is spoken in the word of God. You can go in the word of God and find out what God gave Moses. You see, because what God gave Moses, maybe he didn't give to you and I. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. We just got to learn how to separate what God has given. What God gave Moses, he gave to Moses. But Moses was barely a servant in all his house. Come on and read your testimony of those things which should be spoken after. Come on and read. But Christ you see it again? I like, I like, I like those in scripture because they have a way of getting your attention. But Christ! Yeah. <laughs> now what does that say? There's a difference. And all it's saying, there's a difference between Moses and Christ. All right. Now don't you ever put Moses and Christ on an equal footing. As a matter of fact, you, you can compare, you cannot compare Christ to any man. He is above all and before all. Amen. Jesus said himself, before Abraham was, I am. Come and read a little bit more. But Christ, but Christ as a son over you see the difference in a servant yeah. and someone who is over? Yeah. But Christ as a son over his own house. Amen. It belongs, it's his. Yeah. Yeah. Over his own house. Uh -huh. let, let me forget. Don't let me forget. I'm just giving you the appetizer. Sounds like I'm giving you the meal. <laughs> All right, Bridget. All right. But Christ as a son. Uh, Holy Spirit, I have to say sometimes, Holy Spirit, please right now just leave me alone. <laughs> and Christ, and the son, over his own house. Yeah. Over his own house. Who, yeah. come on. And who house are we? Whose house are we? He's not asking a question. He's telling us, he's telling us who the we house are. Uh -huh. right, Christ has a son over his own house. Whose house we are. Alright. You get it? We are the house of Christ. Over which Christ is over. Over which Christ owns. Or it belongs to him. Amen. What is the church? of Christ. I want to deal with this in some way all week long. Listen, listen to what 
is happening in this text. And then I'll find some way to extend the invitation just after looking at this text and examining it. I promise you, this message will be yours. Listen to, listen to uh, this text. Uh, I want to begin in verse number 13. Listen to what's, what's happening. The latter part. Whom do men say? You see that in your Bible? Yes, sir. You got to follow me in your Bible now. It's unfair. It's unfair for the preacher to preach these days and nobody want to read their Bible. We used to do that years ago where we just went on everything the preacher said. We never ever opened our Bible to see whether or not what the preacher was saying it wasn't in the Bible. And my grandmother, my grandmother would come home uh, on occasions before, before uh, um, uh, she obeyed the gospel before uh, she led us to Jesus Christ. Uh, she would come home and say, the preacher sure did preach. Uh -huh. What did he preach the about? Was asked, what did, what he, did preach he preach about, about mama? Right. And she would reply, I don't know. <laughs> you know but he sure did preach. <laughs> Now that was puzzling to me. If you don't know what he preached, all right, all right. if you don't know what he preached, how do you know he preached at all? All right. <laughs> some of us, some of us will listen and say amen to just about any old thing. Yeah, yeah. But we better make sure that what the preacher is preaching is in the Bible, the Word of God. Amen. Our soul amen. Is at stake. men say about me. That's what Jesus is saying. That's what Jesus is asking. What are men say about me? Amen. Now I want us to get, get this point because it's going to help us to evangelize our community. He's not asking what are men saying about the church. Follow me now. What are men saying about me? Amen. Now, because of the church, in any community, because of the church, in any residential area, because of the church, working on any job, in any profession, your life exemplifies Jesus Christ, or it ought to. Don't you get quiet on me, or it ought to. <laughs> so what are, what are people saying about Christ because of you? Oh, that's some good preaching right there. That, that'll preach all by itself. What are people saying about Christ when they observe you? Jesus is saying to his disciples, what, what do men say about me? Who do they say I am? They replied, well, well, they say, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that you are Elijah. And others say that you're Jeremiah or uh, uh, one of the prophets. Now Jesus turns his attention to those who have been following him, to those that he deemed his disciples and said unto them, but who do you say that I am? Amen. Forget about, forget about popular opinion. Forget about what the majority has to say about me. For, forget about forget about the 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 international view or the national view that's in the world when we talk about the church because people talk talk about the church in in response to it as if the church belongs to the whole world and it's universal in its nature no matter what you do or say but I want you to understand something. The church is in the world. Amen. To influence the world, 
of religion that there is only one church. You don't have to say amen. Just pay attention. Listen, listen to the word of God. What? What do you have to say? Jesus listens to the reply. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Jesus says, you're blessed because you did not receive that from me. You did not receive that from, from what others are having to say about me. For flesh and blood did not reveal it to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Listen to the strength of what Jesus has to say. And I say also unto you that you are Peter, a small pebble, a small pebble. And I say also unto you that you are Peter, Petra. And upon this rock, Petros, the huge, massive stone upon which a foundation can be built. I hear Paul say, flatter foundation can no man lay than that which has already been laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. I, hear, I hear Peter say, for there's salvation in none other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. It's important what people are saying about Christ. Because Paul says in 2 Timothy 2 10, we find salvation in Christ. There, there is no salvation in any other. If a person would be saved, or, or, or they are to be saved, then our salvation is in Christ. Amen. He, he's still the Savior. He's still the Savior. And, and his blood and the gospel will never lose its power. Amen. Never lose its power. Amen. Amen. It had then. It has the same power today. Only, only the hearts and the attitudes of people have changed. Where, where people were ready and receptive to the word of God. We are much too busy to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are much too occupied in our than 20 or 30 minutes of a gospel sermon. So I know you're ready to go. I already know. That's why you're so quiet. But if you don't hurry up and say amen, I'm going to keep on preaching. No, nah, not really. No, nah, not really. No, nah, not really. No, nah, not really. But nah, nah, we live in a world. We live in a world where salvation has been devalued. But God sent his son. No greater gift to, could have ever been given to man that man might be saved. God sent a savior. And Jesus is a wonderful savior. Je Jesus, you know, sometimes people don't think they can be saved, but Jesus can save anybody. Amen. At any time. Yes, sir. Um, in any circumstance. No, no matter how, how far you have drifted away, no matter how deep you have fallen into the pit of sin, Jesus can reach way down. 
lift you up from where you are. Amen. Save the dying soul and even send revival to those who are dying. You know, I have to realize, I have to realize that, that even within the body of Christ, uh -huh. the, the church uh -huh. is dying. Amen. Amen. Not, not dead, but dying. Amen. But there is hope. That God, God, God can raise you up and, 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 and restore you. But that's called really resuscitation. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's it. See, in resuscitation, we need it. The, the, the heart is still beating. All right. All right. It's just All right. faint. All right. They, they told me, and I don't mean to get personal, they told me just a few days ago, I already knew it because they had told me once before, but they just wanted to remind me. They said, you have what is called a weak heart. And it's scared. But as I thought about it, I prayed, God, give me a strong <laughs> heart. Watch out, bridge up. No matter what the doctor says, uh -huh. give me a strong heart. Let's keep me around here a little while longer so I can preach your word. <laughs> And that's exactly what God is doing. All right, Graham. Now that's just that's just an illustration. But the church has what is called a weak heart. And God doesn't want his people to be faint in heart. God wants his people to be courageous in their heart. And to stimulate faith in their hearts and to show the world what is the church of Christ. Because the church of Christ these days is not about what you say. Are you hearing the church? People have heard, people have heard for years. What you have to say. 